when I started making the Thummim sculpture for the keys, I got very involved and told my aging father that I was going to do the sculpture. And he actually pleaded with me, more or less, not to do it. He said I had no right to do it, that our family didn't suffer at the time of the famine. I, I said to him, yeah, but, but our family's a Quaker family. The Quakers did a lot to help. And he said, no, that's not the same. We didn't suffer. You have no right. And once the sculpture was completed, uh, and I was rather proud of it because I did think it was the best thing I'd done up to that stage, he refused in his whole lifetime ever to look at it, ever to look at an image of it or anything. And it was to do with the Quakerism in him, the sort of moral compass of a Quaker. And I think it brings in us into the Frederick Douglass thing as well, because in any of these projects I've dealt with, the ones that I've truly, truly needed to do, that always seems to be a Quaker aspect to it. Certainly with the famine, the Quakers who helped out so much with the soup kitchens, with the convict women who were transported to Van Diemen's land, Elizabeth Fry helping with clothing them, with making them safer on the journey, her work with convicts, and with slavery. The Quakers, again, were the leading force, William Wilberforce, and the activity when Frederick D Douglass was here in Ireland, the Quakers were the ones who were on his side. They were the ones who were trying to make this happen. I'm not a practicing Quaker. It's a long time since I went to a Quaker meeting, but I do know when any of these issues come up that Quakerism is sort of the toolbox inside me, and I always seem very proud of what they've done.